Hey viewers, and welcome back to Moulin Nose. As most of you will know, we live in a French water mill. The water mill is dominated by this guy. A water wheel! And right now, it's not working. Let me show you what the problem is. If we walk down here, the water wheel is about 150 years old and is probably about two meters in diameter and runs on this shaft here. But unfortunately, the wheel became disconnected from the shaft. This is what I think broke it. It needed a new bearing, this old be bearing. The actual ball races have completely smashed. So I put this new butcher pillow bearing on and shimmed it. And I think that what it happened is it lifted up the shaft where and where it connects with the wheel, it just put a lot of stress on this ancient wheel and it broke. Hmm, how to fix it? Well, you know, we could call some expert to come and fix my water wheel, or I could learn to weld. <laughs> After watching lots of YouTube videos, I decided to buy a welder. But which one? Well, we've all seen Orange County Choppers, or this guy who makes making a submarine look easy. Anyway, after consulting the YouTube gurus, I bought this. So this is a MIG welder. MIG metal inert gas but in fact it isn't a MIG welder it's metal no inert gas it works by having a roll of wire the wire is steel wire with some kind of filler in the middle comes in a roll drives through here down through a kind of a hose pipe and then comes out the end you can see it here and this seemed to be what everybody recommended and what everybody is using well it's terrible first of all when I bought the roll of wire it went everywhere second of all I had no idea the tensions to put on the roll or the tensions to put on the pinch roller here I had it far too tight turned it on and it snapped in fact the most humorous thing was somebody told me you can test it by turning on the welder only 110 amps pressing the trigger and putting your finger and seeing if the f your finger pressure will stop the wire coming out um yeah there was no kind of picture of him doing that so i guess that might just kill me so i didn't do it I tried it and basically how it works is the wire comes out and you can decide how much wire comes out with this knob that alters the speed the wire comes out and this one's very simple it's got A for low and B for high power and I found it just impossible to find a good setting it has something on the cover you can look up the thickness of your metal and it basically suggests either A or B low or high and the setting is down or up well too low nothing happened too high it kind of was like meltdown and even in the middle all I managed to do was kind of blow holes in this kind of t test piece of metal and make kind of really awful kind of blobby messes as you can see it really didn't work very well so, I needed something different. I came across this. It's also made by the French company GYS. And this is just a basic arc welder or stick welder. It's really easy to use and it costs half the price of the silly wire one. So I'm recommending you get a stick welder. Let's try it and see how it works. 
Having a welder around the house is good for lots of things. My wife came up with this great idea. Can I make a wine glass holder? I think the first thing to do is let's get this angle iron to the right length. So, a bit of personal protection equipment. I'm going to be using these glasses. Yeah, there we go. That's about a foot. Now my new favorite piece of kit is this cordless angle grinder. But it's not that powerful for grinding, but what I use it for is just uh, with a rough sanding disc. This particular tool is made by a German company, Einhell, and it comes with an 18 volt, 3 amp battery. If you put too much force on it, it will cut out, but it's compensated for by its portability. So the next step is let's subdivide the length of this angle bar which will be hold the rods and make center points where we're going to drill. So here's my center punch. It's a impact one and a sharpie. I think every two inches will be fine. Six. Now center punching makes this tiny dot as you guys know and it will help drilling. So this is a four mil metal drill and this will make a pilot hole in here. Till the drill snaps, that is. It's the four and a half mil drill bit. So we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six, four and a half mil holes. And what we're going to be doing is putting this rebar in here and so what i thought i'd do is get a, a drill which is just about the same diameter as the rebar maybe a little smaller and drill all the way through and then shove the rebar in okay so you notice that the rebar doesn't quite fit in there that's intentional I'll show you why in a minute. Let's get the rest. Whee! There we go. So, the next step is to taper this hole so it fits the rebar, but the rebar doesn't go all the way through. So, to tape a hole, I'm going to use the step drill. Ah, 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 I think I see a problem. The step drill won't fit down. Hmm. It's got these new, they're called multi purpose drill bits. They come with this fancy blue color and they have like a masonry tip on the end. But on the packet, it says metal, soft tile, wood, brick, or concrete. So that's still too small. Try this middle one and see what happens.
you see what I'm doing is I don't want to go all the way through I want to leave a little lip in the bottom so I can put the rebar in and weld from the bottom I think that's gonna work it's a bit big and I have to be careful that I don't go all the way through The rebar now fits in all of these holes, but doesn't go through. Well, I guess the next thing to do is to cut some of the rebar to the right length. Slightly warm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ta da! Alright, so let's set up the welding. Get a clamp. Put a clamp there. Now, this is kind of a thick rod, but um, that's fine. Oh, I just broke a rule there. <laughs> I touched the welding rod, but luckily the welder was off. And what I'm going to be doing, it's not switched on right now, is I'm just going to put a little tack weld around the hole to try and hold the rebar vertical. Oh, the rod's stuck. Feels a bit more secure. Well, they're off. Rod down. Yeah, that's okay. Oh. Now I find when the, st the welder's off, when the stick gets about this length, you're so close to the hot metal, it burns your hand, so throw it away. Welder off. My magnet moved and the rod is hot and not being held, so that's no bloody good. Something like that. Rod up, welder on, helmet down, welding. Aww. I think what happened is I was a little nervous about the camera being so close so I'm just going to stop the camera so 
I made this big globby blob. Seems to. Maybe I'm moving it too fast before it cools. I don't know. There. That's the last one. I think I've got enough welding rod left. Let's try it. Oh my god, this one's still not working. pretty hot. Hopefully it worked. So the idea here was just to tack it, but it's made a hell of a mess. Not bugger. Thank you. The welder is off. Turn it on. And of course I can't really see a thing. Maybe I can see this one. One, two, three, four, five, six blobbies. Turn the welder off. Well, that's what I wanted to do. You still seem pretty secure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 